Welcome back to the channel guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Now, today I'm going to show you how to make your old crappy looking calipers look brand new. Believe it or not, this did look exactly the same as this. This is the right and this is the left, same vehicle. So, let's get straight into it. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is remove all your brake pads. Ignore the shiny looking bolts. I have uh, got a heap of my bolts re-zinked, which is a relatively cheap process, but these are the original bolts as well. So if you pull your first slide pin bolt out, go to the second one. Now the sliding section will separate. You can remove the two clips, put them to the side. Now if you just peel the boot off of the slide, that will slide straight out. We'll remove that bit of junk. So they'll be greased for a reason. You want them to be nice. If you're doing lots of muddy trails and whatever, that can be full of crap and your brakes won't slide properly. Now also take notice that one of these has a rubber, I'll get a rag here. Now you can see it better. One of these has a rubber sleeve on the, on the outside of it. That rubber sleeve, now I don't actually know if it makes any difference, but I'm just going to put it back as it came apart. That rubber sleeve came from this side, which is the bottom cylinder. The way you can tell a bottom cylinder is the bleed screw will be on the top. The reason the bleed screw is on the top is so when you're bleeding it, the air is bleeding out because the air bubble will be at the top of the cylinder. So take note, take a photo, whatever you need to do to remember that. That you can put this, the uh, slide pins to the side with your bolts. Now, that is pretty good to go straight into the sandblaster. What I did do is cut up a little corner of your rag, roll it into a bit of a sausage roll, and I jammed that in there, just like that, because you don't, you don't really need a sandblast in that area. The thing with sandblasting is you are taking it back to metal, to bare metal. So anything that you don't coat afterwards is going to rust and corrode. Now it's not super vulnerable in there, but you just don't need extra grit and sand in them, in these, in these slide pin holes. So, so that one there, good to go in the sandblaster. With this one, I'll do the same technique, cut some rag and roll up and put into both the inlet line for the brake fluid, brake line, and also the bleed screw. But with the pistons, I'm doing something a little bit different. Now, I'm pulling the boots off. You can sort of get your fingers in there. These are crusty as, but. And pull the boot off. Now I've got full rebuild kits for these, as far as seals, slides, boots. Um, so I'm not concerned on keeping them. That's actually in pretty good condition. So it does pay just to keep that because if you tear a, one of the new ones putting it in, that can save you. So don't, if it's, if it's still in good condition, don't throw it out. Now, get yourself some good cloth tape. There's heaps on the market. And I want to just wrap that around, just past the groove, where that top lip, where the boot sits. So that tape is just past the boot. That way, when I compress the cylinder back in, I won't be damaging any of the cylinder. You do not want to damage any of the cylinder because that's a fine tolerance that seals well and it's polished. Um, there's a lot of pressure in these brake lines, so you don't want, you'll have if you damage these cylinders, you need to get new cylinders because they won't seal. 
and you won't have any brakes, you'll just have brake fluid leaking everywhere. Now what I did is run a couple cuts, just fold them in. Okay, over at the press, got me cylinder sitting on the body, something flat that's not going to interfere with the other cylinder one at a time. You don't need a 20 ton press to do this, but it does make it easier. You just want to press it into its, and you'll just feel a little bit of pressure there, so you just stop. Shuffle him over and do the other one. So now you can see that I've protected that whole cylinder deeper than where the sandblasting will get. So that is bloody beautiful. Last thing you want to do before it's ready for the cabinet, get yourself a little bit more rag. You just want to do the same as the, the slide rail, roll him up and sort of twist him in there. This is the blast cabinet I'm using. Now it is nothing special or too expensive. I think they're like 300 bucks, 350 bucks or something like that. So obviously you need a compress compressor to run it uh, and you need garnet in it. Now, the things that I've learned so far from using these is keep your glass protection underneath relatively fresh. This is one that I just pulled out. So imagine trying to look at your work through there. That's not dusty either. That's just abrasion from the, the uh, garnet. Another tip, turn your lights off above you. It will stop the reflection from your viewing window. And now this one is just an, another one I've sort of uh, got the hang of. Put this in the door so it can suck some fresh air and then have your vacuum on the other side set as low as you can if you've got a variable speed vacuum. Now that's dialed right down so it's not singing. So dial that right down. What that does, and it seems to do quite well, is if you don't have something in the door and it seals, it will suck and want to rip your gloves off your inserts. So if you have some fresh air sucking in, it just avoids having that dusty, it doesn't suck the garnet because it's real low, but it just takes the dust, which impedes with your vision. Another thing I've also done is to get more light in the cabinet, is just have your phone on here with your, with your torch on the front, uh, and it's a lot better to see. Here's our first bit. So hopefully you can hear me. The vacuum and the compressor are on at the moment, but um, nothing easy comes quickly. Not with this glass cabinet anyway. It does do a much better job than say a wire wheel because you can get into a lot of tighter areas and around things, but it does take time. After giving them a couple of hints on visual to making this cabinet a lot more usable. Like beforehand, I used to be looking through gaps trying to be like this, but yeah, it does take time. So uh, I will see you when these parts are clean. Okay, so now we have finished sandblasting. It's all looking pretty good. Now you don't want to keep touching this stuff too much with your hands. Um, especially if you've got greasy hands, so gloves will be good, but I'll give this another wipe down uh, before we coat it. We need to get our pistons out. Uh, so the way we do this, uh, it is easier with a single piston caliper, like the rear one. Single piston makes it a lot easier. You'll notice why in a second. Um, first, things we, first thing we need to do, spin her over, Get your bleed, bleed screw, bleed nipple, whatever you want to call it, and just wind that in. We want to block that port off. Now, with that block port, that port blocked off, you need a compressor. 
and a small bit of rubber. So what I do, basically you want to get some form of seal around this. So I just roll it into a cone shape, poke it in there, and then put the compressor nozzle in there, push him in. Now, when I pull this trigger, it's going to want to push pressure, but because there's two pistons, it wants to equally push pressure, well, it'll push on the least resistance, so um, I'll show you. Oop, there goes one. Okay, now that first one's out. Um, obviously the air that we pump in is going to just escape through there. So I'm going to put that back in just a little way. Just so it's on that seal. And then grab a series of packers or something. Here's some I prepared earlier. So now that can't escape that air. Well, hopefully not. Grab our compressor again. And yeah, there it is, second one out. So put them to the side, remove our packing. And this one should just be able to wiggle that out. So that needs a bit of a clean out inside because you've got old brake fluid. Get that oily crap out. And now we're going to give that another clean up with our POR solvent and a relatively clean rag. So there is some seals in here. I'm just going to leave them in there for now. We can pull them out and replace them before we uh, go to rebuild it, but I'm just going to give that <coughs> dry that thinners I'm going to remove my bleed screw because I don't want paint on that wherever we don't want paint we need to mask up so instead of wasting your time I'll just show you these ones. You'll see in there, I've taped up around, cut it off so I can still get paint where I want it. It'll be visible to the outside elements and then just stuffed a rag in the bottom. And in both the holes, I've just stuffed a rag in there. So push that in, hanging on a bit of wire. And then we get ready to, uh, to paint. The first time on my first, Oops, first batch of stuff. Uh, I actually brushed it. So on this one, I think I'm gonna spray it. Well, I'm gonna spray it, I've done the thinking. So I'm using, excuse the mess, I've got multiple jobs going on here. POR high temp, um, temperatures of up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. So the idea, Brake calipers get hot. I want to protect against that. They do a caliper paint, but I just went this way for no reason, really. Okay. I think we are good to go. They suggest that the first coat be light. So that's what they'll get.